If you're new to PreSonus Studio One and you're ready to hit the record button, well, today's video, we're gonna record a very short song together, but I'm gonna show you every setting and step along the way to recording a song and exporting it from Studio One. So you wanna check this video out all the way to the end. My name is Chris Green. My channel is all about practical tips and advice for guitar players. If you're not a guitar player, this video will still be applicable to you as we are now in the world of recording our music. So hit the subscribe button if that's interesting to you. And while you're at it, hit the like button because hey, why not? We are gonna be recording using this microphone, which is the Shure SM7B. You're gonna hear that a little bit later. You're gonna hear also the differences we get between these two mics. I have one audio interface that you can't see on camera right now, and it's the PreSonus Quantum 2. If you've seen any of my previous videos, this is the one that plugs in by Thunderbolt into USB-C. So every step along the process, you're gonna be able to see a screen recording of us going through Studio One together, creating a new song. And then I'll mention any sort of settings that I might change on the audio interface, especially when we get to setting the levels on the microphone. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say PreSonus Studio One, don't worry, I'm gonna cover all the basics here in this video, but I also have a couple other videos I wanna recommend that you watch after this one. The first one, is a home studio build recommendations video. In that, I'm gonna talk about the interface, speakers, headphones, microphones, things that you might need hardware-wise to get started with a home recording studio. The second video I wanna to recommend to you is the one I did on PreSonus Studio One, and that one details the installation process, downloading it from presonus.com, and then going through and customizing the installation so that it has all of the necessary tools you need to start recording. If you have seen those videos or you know what I'm saying when I say PreSonus Studio One, let's go ahead and jump in and open up Studio One. Now on this computer, I have Studio One version six, the professional version. If you're using PreSonus Studio One Artist or if you're using Studio One version five or version four, or even maybe the prime version of Studio One. Everything we're doing in this video is gonna be applicable to you. We're not gonna to get too fancy with special features and plugins just yet. So here we have on the screen, we have the nice clean Studio One home page. And before you go clicking this button here for new song, what I want you to do is take a look in the middle column. And in the middle column, it should recognize what your playback device or recording device is. So go to the middle here under the word setup. Mine says Quantum 2. Quantum 2 is the name of the interface I have plugged in to this computer. If this is the first time you're turning on Studio One and you've got a new audio interface, you're gonna wanna make sure that audio interface is installed correctly. If it is a PreSonus interface, they do a good job about Studio One being able to recognize your interface when you plug it in. But let's just say it says MacBook Pro speakers or MacBook Pro headphones right here. Well, you wanna click under the word setup, give it a click. This will pull up the preferences tab. Under preferences, we have audio setup, playback device. We wanna select this. See, we have different choices here. Built-in output is pretty common. That's the speakers coming out of your computer or that could be the headphone jack on your laptop. You wanna select whatever interface you're using. So I'm using the Quantum 2 and then recording device. You wanna make sure you get off of the built-in microphone and select Quantum 2. Again, whatever your audio interface is. Device block size. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned we would talk a little bit more about this. Okay, here's my limited understanding of block size when it comes to Studio One. When you are recording music, the lower you can set the block size, the better it's gonna be for as you're recording. If you are singing into your microphone or talking into your microphone and you hear a delay or you hear a stutter, what's happening is there's so much processing happening for you to be able to listen back to the audio that the computer is actually causing what's called latency or a delay. If you lower the block size, you should start to hear that delay get less and less. 
the computer is spending less resources on processing your audio and it's feeding it back to you in smaller bite size forms. However, when you are processing your audio, if you've already recorded your audio tracks and you're going to the mixing stage of things, you want to raise your block size as high as you can take it. What I typically do is I start at 256. So if we're recording, you're new to recording, I want you to set your block size to 256 and see how that does for you. And then whenever we get to playback, we can switch to something like 1024 or 1024. If none of that stuff makes sense to you, check this out. If I set my block size to 256 samples, 48 kilohertz recording, it will give me a latency of about five milliseconds. It's pretty drastic. If I drop it down to 64, look what happens to our input latency. The latency drops down to 1.5 milliseconds. The latency is absolutely a factor. Sometimes as home studio owners, dealing with latency is just part of the game. If you're using a USB interface or something that's a lot lesser quality, you're gonna have a lot more latency issues. The lower the block size is, the more prone you might be to something that's called audio dropout. So it really just depends on what interface you're using. And also as you have more experience recording, the more problems you have, the more you'll need to change some of these settings. For me, setting it to 256 seems to be a good compromise. I feel like I can record what I need to record and I can listen back to what I need to listen back to, even if I'm not able to go through and change a bunch of block size settings. All right, so now we spent enough time on this audio setup Again, you don't really need to do this every time you open up Studio One. That would be such a bummer if you had to spend all your time in the audio setup window. As you open up Studio One, you just wanna glance over, make sure you see your interface, and now we can go over to the button for New. Once you've clicked New, you should have this window pop up here where it asks you if you wanna use a template or if you just wanna jump in and start recording. I'm gonna give this song a name. I'm gonna call it how great thou art. We're just gonna record a little snippet of this song that happens to be pub public domain. I don't wanna get in trouble with our YouTube overlords here. Now below the word name, it's gonna ask us where we wanna save our music. Now by default, this is gonna to go to your documents folder, but if you watch my previous video, we talked about having an external SSD make sure you have that plugged in and ready to go. For this song, How Great Thou Art, I'm gonna be recording an acoustic track and a vocal track. I'm not too worried about it bogging down my computer. We will get to virtual instruments and recording that way in a future video. Okay, so here we have the song, How Great Thou Art. It's being saved to my documents folder. The sample rate, it's totally up to you however you wanna record. Nine times out of 10, I'm recording projects at 48 kilohertz. Most of the time I'm doing this music stuff for either a YouTube video or something that we're using at church. If I were recording something that I wanna to release to the world and this is gonna be on iTunes or Spotify, I feel like I'm really showing my age there by saying iTunes, but if you are planning on releasing your music like an album or this is a project that you really wanna put a lot of work and effort into, if you can get away with 96 kilohertz and it doesn't destroy your computer, go ahead and go for it. There's a lot of discussion about sample rate and what's better than what. I believe that when you used to listen to audio CDs, audio CDs are at 44.1. So even if you're recording at 48 kilohertz, you're still recording at a sample rate higher than what was on the Backstreet Boys CD you used to listen to growing up. Okay, 48 kilohertz, let's set it for that. Now let's hit the OK button. Now you'll be greeted with what is the default view on Studio One. The first thing I would do, just jumping out of the gate, is go down here to this Browse button. Let's get rid of the Browse window on the screen. 
And believe it or not, I want you to click the mix tab. The mix tab is something that it's good to get used to seeing because if you're coming from any sort of live sound or audio world, you're gonna to start to see things like faders that look very familiar to us. This button here, add tracks, or you can hit the T key on your keyboard. What we wanna do is we wanna start recording, we need to have tracks. And tracks are another way of saying either instruments or separate audio groups. They're gonna be blended together. So for this song, like I mentioned, we're gonna be recording a little bit of the song How Great Thou Art. And I'm gonna be using an acoustic guitar. So that would be one track, one audio track. The next track I want to record is a vocal, lead vocal. So this is gonna be a two track, song that we're recording. The first audio track, I'm gonna call it guitar as it's already written in. Count, it wants to know how many of these tracks would you like to create? I'm gonna keep it at one. Color, you can go in here and if you're really worried about it, make your acoustic guitar track yellow if you'd like. It's all just for visual cues. Format, mono or stereo? Well, for both the acoustic guitar and my vocal, I'm gonna use one microphone and it's a mono microphone. So if you've got one audio source or one microphone you're using, you're gonna to wanna to set to mono. Mono audio tracks can actually turn into a stereo mix. So just because you're selecting a mono track doesn't mean that your mix or your song isn't going to be in stereo in the end, okay? We'll get to that in just a little bit. So mono, because I'm using this one microphone, FX chain, I'm not gonna use any of these presets. I'm just not a preset user. You can create your own presets of plugins and things like that, but especially when I'm recording, I'm using Studio One like people used to use the old tape machines or reel-to-reel -reel devices back in the day. I just want it to be nice and simple. Now, input, my microphone is plugged into input two on the audio interface output. I'm gonna leave it at main, hit okay. Now, as you can see, we have a guitar audio track down here at the bottom. Do you see now we have a fader? So if again, if, you're, if you've come from live sound or you're familiar with consoles, here is your fader for our guitar audio track. I'm gonna right click where it says guitar up here and I'm gonna hit duplicate track. I'm duplicating because I'm actually gonna use the same microphone for recording vocals. But what I wanna do is change, I'm gonna double click here where it says guitar two. I'm gonna change this to vocal. And then next to vocal, I'm gonna click this yellow box. I'm just gonna make it blue. So right now we have two tracks. If you're looking at this as a mixer, we have two faders, two inputs. Now what I'm gonna do is grab my trusty headphones. As I mentioned in another video, these are my closed back headphones. These headphones are gonna allow me to hear what the microphone is hearing. And also we need to set what's called our click track. And let's start with our guitar track. So I'm gonna click guitar and I'm gonna click this white circle that has record next to it. My Shure SM7B is plugged into a box that's called a cloud lifter. You don't need to know what that means at the moment. If you do have a Shure SM7B, I'd encourage you to research the Cloud CL1B. What it will do is it will give a boost to the volume that's coming out of this SM7B so that you don't have to turn the gain up on your interface. Now, speaking of interfaces, whatever microphone you have plugged into your interface at the moment, if you have it plugged into channel one, you wanna to go to the channel one gain knob. This is usually a physical knob on your audio interface. And what I want you to do on studio one, is I want you to click this button over here that's labeled inputs, or if you're using a newer version of studio one, it's got an arrow pointing in. And as soon as you do, you're gonna see these audio levels on the screen. Okay, that blue bar, every time I'm talking, that blue bar is giving me a readout of what the microphone is hearing. And just so you see a visual, I'm gonna turn the gain knob down, and as I turn it down, you see the blue bar is going away. 
What I will do, I'm going to turn the gain knob up higher and higher and higher. And as you can see, now we are starting to distort. Okay. There's also, as you bring the gain knob up, there's also going to be some noise that happens. That's just functions of me being in this room right now. Most likely some of these recording video lights and all these computers set up probably doesn't help with the noise in this room but just be mindful of your game. On Studio One, they have a bar right here next to this bar that I'm speaking to now is the number negative 24 dB. And then above that, there is a bar that says negative 12. Whenever I'm recording for Studio One, what I typically do, this is totally up to you, but I want my record of volume that's coming in, I want this blue bar to be hovering in between negative 24 and negative 12, test one, two. So the loudest part of my song, if I'm strumming a guitar, I need to strum very loudly and make sure that that loud part doesn't go higher than negative 12, because if we do, we're gonna have what's called clipping. If you see a red light on Studio One, it is telling you that you are clipping your signal. Clipping is usually not a great thing, but we also don't want it to be too much lower than negative 24. So if you're playing something very softly, make sure that you turn the gain knob up to compensate for that, okay? So having the input window open is a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Let's go over here to what is called our click track. So on the right side next to the main fader, we have this metronome, this picture of a metronome, okay? That is our click. Just so you know, the button next to it says click volume. If you click and drag, you can bring the volume down. Every single time I record a song, I usually forget to do this. This is a very important step. This click volume is going to be blasting in your ears as soon as you start. So I usually set mine this is about at negative 16, I believe is what it says. And when I hit play, if I hit the space bar or the play button, Let's take a listen for our click track. All right, if you hit C on the keyboard or down here, there's a picture of a metronome. Let's enable the metronome. Okay, that is a good volume for me. Again, when you start recording, what you can do is hit play and start to speak or sing and listen to how loud that click is in relation to what you're recording. Okay, so the C button, the C key on your keyboard that will enable and disable the click track. The other button that's good to know on your keyboard are these arrow keys next to the question mark. So if you're using an Apple keyboard, by pressing the left pointing arrow just above the space bar on the right, we can actually go all the way back to the beginning of our song, which is a good spot to be in. Like I said, we're, we're going to be recording the song How Great Thou Art. It's just going to be a couple measures worth, nothing too crazy. I'm going to go down here where it says tempo. If you put your mouse over the word tap tempo, you can click multiple times and set the tempo of your song. So I'm thinking All right, so we just did the tap tempo and it looks like we're at 108. You can be more picky about whatever tap tempo, whatever tempo you want to set for the click track for whatever song you're working on. Just make sure you get it set before you start recording. If you're using click track, you don't have to use a click track to record. Modern music, everything like that, most people are using click track. Just something to be aware of. So now I'm gonna grab my acoustic guitar. We're gonna set the microphone level so that it's a good spot for the guitar. And also we're gonna make sure the gain knob is correct for recording. All right, so I've got my input monitor open. I've got the microphone a lot lower now, and I wanna see what volume we're getting out of this guitar. All right, so now I've got the microphone set up for my guitar. Let's go ahead and hit record.
this above the audio track you just recorded. You see this looks like a ruler. Well, these are actually the measures of the recording. So as you can see, I started playing on measure three, the downbeat of measure three. It looks like we stopped somewhere around 15, between 15 and 16. This ruler is how we navigate across the song. So if you put your mouse and you're on the Apple computer, you can actually use your Apple mouse to scroll left and right. If you're on a Windows, I believe it's a similar process. But if you also click and drag up, you can minimize how much detail there is on your recording. Or if you drag down, you can zoom in and get really close and personal. So as you can see, my first note is actually a little bit ahead of the downbeat. Now what I'm gonna do is switch from recording guitar. I'm gonna click this record button and now, I'm enabled, now I've enabled recording for the vocal. One thing I wanna mention is that my audio interface is a little bit weirder than most. This button here next to record called input monitoring, the monitor button. On your audio interface, you may actually want to click this button to not monitor the incoming audio. A lot of audio interfaces have their own console or their own program software that runs separate from Studio One. If you have a universal audio audio interface, I know that they have a console app and in that console app, you can enable and disable what's called input monitoring. All right, so now is my least favorite part, which is the singing, but let me go ahead and record a vocal here, sing a little bit of How Great Thou Art. I'm gonna hit this arrow key to go back to the beginning of the song. Make sure my vocal track is selected and then I'm gonna hit record. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. All right, so as you can see on the screen, we have an acoustic track, we have a vocal track, but the process isn't over just yet. Now we do have a recording that we can listen back to. I'm gonna do a little bit of mixing and you can watch me on the screen. I'm gonna add some what's called EQ. I might add some compression. I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb and I'm gonna add what's called a limiter. Now, all of these things, I'll go into further detail in future videos, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. But for this video, just wanted to show the process of getting up and started with recording. You're gonna to wanna to spend a lot of time deep diving into the process of mixing, but for purposes of this video, I'm gonna mix up a little bit. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of talking, but I'm gonna mix a little bit of this song you pay attention to what I'm doing on this screen. Thanks so much for watching. Let's mix this thing up and then we'll hit export.
everyone. As you can see, there's a, quite a few many things that I did on this mix, but it's actually not that too much. I didn't go too crazy. One thing I did here was, especially at the end there, there's some click track coming through on the microphone. So if you hear that click track, you're gonna wanna go through and either redo it or make sure you cover it up. Now this region I've selected above the ruler, I've created what's called a loop region. In the loop region, it does exactly what it says. If you click and drag anywhere across above the ruler here, this blue highlighted area is going to set a loop. So as soon as it gets to the end of that track, it loops back, continue to play. You can turn the loop on and off if you hit the question mark key on your keyboard. That will enable and disable the loop. Only other things I did, this is the EQ plugin that comes straight with PreSonus Studio One, so you should have access to this as well. I just rolled off some low end, a little bit of rumble, added a little bit of mid range and highs, copied the same thing over with the vocal. I created what's called an effects track and added PreSonus Room Reverb, loaded up a church, which is a pretty significantly long reverb, and then created sends. So I sent the acoustic guitar track and I sent some of the vocal track to that reverb and then I turned the reverb down a little bit and then I turned my vocal down a little bit. When I'm mixing, I tend to make the vocal a lot louder than maybe it's supposed to be. So that's something I'm trying to get better at. And then over here on what's called the main bus or the mix bus, I loaded PreSonus Studio One's version of a limiter. A limiter is basically just gonna try to keep it from clipping when we export. I wanna make sure it's not losing any of its life. So with that being said, let's take a listen to what we've got recorded after a quick mix. Then sings my soul, I say. Make sure you set the loop region appropriate so that you have the beginning of the song covered and the end of the song covered. And then what you can do is go up to the word song and hit export mix down. At export mix down, it's gonna ask you what you wanna call the song. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this one, How Great Thou Art. I'm gonna go with a wave file. So a wave file is generally gonna be the highest resolution you can get with these kinds of songs, set it to 24 bit and then make sure the sample rate is the same that you had when you were recording. So if you were recording at 96K, go ahead and keep it at 96K WAV file. And then up here where it says export range, make sure you select between loop. That's why we set our loop range to the beginning and end of the song. We can go through in future videos, I'll show you how to set a start and end marker or other markers in place. And then also just make sure you check off any of these that you might need to. Mine's pretty much standard. Whenever you set this up the first time, you'll just need to change the file name. If you need to export as an MP3, if this is just something you wanna send in an email to somebody, you can also export as an MP3. I would just make sure you do constant bit rate and 320 kilobytes per second. That's gonna be probably the highest MP3 quality you're gonna get. But of course, an MP3 file is gonna be a lot smaller than a WAV file. So I'm gonna export just the WAV. I'm gonna hit OK. Studio One's gonna do its thing. It's now exporting our audio, and then it opens up a window, and here we have our song. How fun is that? I hope you've had a good time with recording with Studio One. Like I mentioned, there's so many videos and there's so much content we still have to cover with the software. So if you're a guitar player or you're a singer songwriter and you're looking to get into the recording world, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we got so much to cover, not only with this, but guitar lessons in general. Really appreciate all the support. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.